All right, guys, check one, two. Just need some people to throw in the comments that they can hear me, and we'll get started. Oh, for one, maybe we can get some uh, some some information. You guys hear me okay out there? Okay, here we go. We copied. First one. All right, so we are live. Um, 24-20 lost. This one sucks. You're going to watch the film. You're going to be really upset with it, largely because – when you watch this game and go through the Browns having 13 minutes of ball control um, over Seattle and running 20 more plays and coming out on the wrong end of this, it really stinks. So uh, obviously starting with third and two play here on the first drive. So the Browns get it to third and two, quick three and out. There's your full play. want to go through it with you. So you're going to get a front side center and guard pull. And teams are starting to pick up on this tendency. You can kind of feel where Brooks – and Wagner have called this out. Look how quick they are to trigger downhill. They feel what's coming. Honestly, what you would like to do is run this play up inside the pull. So as it works laterally right here, you would like to run it off of Osich's rear end. But number 90 here, I think it's Jaron Reed, does a really great job of as they get this crash here, he's kind of sifting over the top, and he creates the chaos that doesn't allow this play to move. Right, so you'll see it. He's the one who takes the cut that you want to have away. Try to bounce it at that point. David's block, which is a seal for an alley, is 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 dead on arrival. Right, so third and two, you test that water. You see if it's a play you feel like you can run. They don't run it very successfully. All right, next drive out. Seahawks went down and scored. We'll talk about defense here in a little bit. Second and ten. The Browns are in this little flip draw. I like this. It's very simple. You get pass sets by the tackles. Right. So you get a pass set by both tackles, influencing pass sets upfield. What does that create? It creates some nice run lanes. Okay, yeah, Philly, uh, I saw your question about keeping it. They obviously can. They keep it later, so they start incorporating more uh, keep stuff later on. Um, good lanes here, right? You're kind of reading the backer. You can pick which direction you want to go. You're kind of setting influence. I like this draw, right? You end up reading it, pressing the hole, doing a good job getting off late to the to the backer. Climbing, that's nine yards easy like that. Get the second and ones. Uh, same drive, third and two, 829. Let's watch it through the first time. This is a nice play. Good play by Amari Cooper. Let's go back and talk about concept. What's going on here, right? A couple of good options for the quarterback created. So you're getting a little drive concept right here. Pulling down. Kind of getting a high-low right here on this backer with a dig over top. And then I like this where you're getting kind of a quick now flat, creating some space. You're going to pull down right here. And then Amari does a little, little hitch and go. Pick your poison, right? So we all know that PJ likes to find Amari. Um, this is just a good route by Amari. You got two answers. If you wanted to go middle, you'd have to be thrown right now. He's kind of locked into Amari. So you hope he makes the double move that works out, ends up working out back shoulder. It's a great catch. You'll see from the tight view here, really good job. Heads left by the quarterback right away, not really even processing DPJ over the middle, even though that's, an, as you guys, as smart as I am here, that's a very clear sight line to a first down. That's a great catch and a good job. You can see Amari here getting the knee, that left knee down right there. So... I mean, the hard route to the first down, but nonetheless, a first down. Same drive again. 8-11, first and 10, bootleg. Just kind of want to cover how teams are <laughs> – there's just nothing there. Teams are really taking away backside bootleg stuff. And honestly, when you run a wide receiver at this direction, it kind of influences his backside edge, and there's just no, – they're not getting any cheap yards on this stuff right now. Honestly, and they, they started going – they're going away from it. Um it's the best outcome for them to go away from it, right? R very best outcome. Here's, <laughs> I was watching this live. The Browns are really struggling and empty. So you got a chance to look at it. Second and 10, the empty stuff is, is hard to watch. At this moment, you know, again, if you're watching Amazon Prime, you're probably seeing like they put this little, the, the, the red circle underneath this player's feet. And, and you can see, there's 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 cheating going on here and why do you say jake well you're you're kind of you know the play what do you have right here capped 
capped coverage here to take over for this. So when you see somebody walk down almost directly over top of another player in the slot, that's a huge indicator that they're bringing pressure, right? Look at this. He's cheating out more and more to be there. Huge pressure indicator. Can't make a hot call because there's no, you know, you'd have to identify it. So he doesn't identify it. He never even really, if you're, if you're asking me, he doesn't even really spend any time looking this direction, identifying what Julian Love is doing right here. So you don't see it. You don't identify for hot. I mean, I'll give Jed credit. He tried to get a hand on him, but this is a quarterback mistake, right? Because if he knows it's hot right now, he's got answers. He's got two flat answers. Second down. It's not third down. He's got a flat answer right here, and he's got a flat answer right there. So this is on the quarterback. But again, how much can a quarterback handle? Can P.J. Walker handle being an empty? And it doesn't feel like he can handle doing it. So you got it. You got to go away from it. It's a tough turnover, man. Really tough turnover. Seahawks are now up 14 nothing. all the momentum in the world early in the game. Second and six now. Next drive. Let's watch it through. This is a drive brought to you by the feature of screens. So this is a really nice one. A good job by sometimes guys doing screen work are way too quick to let somebody go. Kareem does a great job right there of sitting into the into the protection, sitting, sitting, one, two, three, and then releasing. Good job by P.J. of sneaking the football on the inside portion of the defender, and you get nine yards, right? Todd, your question, I don't want to miss anyone's questions. I feel like I've been doing that too much. Should they have slid on that play, the last play? So in order to slide, you would have to make a protection call. Usually protection will be set to the field, the wide side, to account for anything, of na any uh, overloads or anything like that. If he makes now, if PJ makes a hot call right here and identifies the left side pressure, then you would get left slide, left slide, left slide, left slide, and you'd have a chance to pick it up. But since PJ, you can see, he doesn't make any call. He doesn't identify this capped defender. He doesn't identify this cheat that's happening right here. No, you don't get a slide. And that's why the play is dead, right? Because everybody thinks it's normal protection. So you don't get that help. So, yeah, in theory, the line should have slid, but they have to have that call from the quarterback to make it. And it's funny because as I as I said that, I'm, I'm looking at the wide view. You can see PJ kind of flips his head to the left, but he is he is totally unaware last second what's going on there and obviously he takes a sack. Um, we've watched the screen now, so a good gain. First down, I think this ended up being 12 yards. Let's watch this one through again, first and 10. This one works out quite well. The only thing they're getting off play action is screens. Like, that's all they're really able to dial up. This is a great job by a couple different people. We'll talk through it here in just a second. Good gain. I think it's a 41-yard gain. So, nice job here of selling. Wide zone booting back away. Taking Goodwin. Sorry about that. Taking Goodwin, running him off coverage. Taking these two out of the play. Check back down, right? Linemen are being patient, not getting downfield, staying at the line of scrimmage. I wish I could stop doing that, right? Get out. Good job by Postage here of just staying on as necessary. And good job by Joel of not creating a penalty there, just creating enough room. And a good job by Pierre Strong of bursting through, making a big play. Now, this is the one that's even more fun. We'll watch this one through. This isn't technically a screen, but... It certainly works off of your screen stuff. You got defensive players from Seattle running everywhere. So what you're doing is you're selling two different screen actions, right? Selling screen here, selling screen back the other direction, creating lineman pulling out in both directions, which pulls multiple defenders in different directions. And then selling you're selling David blocking right here for this right side screen. And then you toss release and, and spin back inside. You got a chance for a really big play. See, so you're selling screen right, selling screen left. You got people all over the field. Middle of the defense is wide open. You just have to deliver the football, make one man miss, surf on another into the end zone. The end zone view, the tight view here, as I like to say, is 
is an even more fun perspective of it. So you'll see how you got eyes chasing here. You got eyes chasing. There. You got two guys coming after the quarterback. That's exactly what you want. Just have to deliver the ball, which he does. Right there. Good stuff. 17-7 now. So the Seahawks went down and got a field goal. Still first quarter, 3.30 left. Again, with with PJ, I just feel like there's some there's a lot of pick your pick your route ahead of time and throw it. Like because I'm not sure what we're processing here. The dig is wide open. Now he I guess there's some miscommunication here. So I'm not really gonna get that mad at him because man, right here when when Moore takes I'm not sure what number what 21's name is here, the corner, when he gets that inside leverage, I'm pretty sure PJ thinks he's gonna win upfield. Now, why he snaps it off, I don't know. It happened a couple times in this game where it looked like Moore had run past his man, but snaps it off. I mean, it's a bummer because look at the middle of the field dig from Goodwin. There's a lot of space to work with there. So that outcome is not exactly what you're looking for. And here's an example. You might ask, well, why doesn't Pierre Strong play a little bit more? Well, the pass protection stuff is not good for him. Now, this is not easy. It's Bobby Wagner, right? But you got to be able to you got to be able to do better than this right that you create chaos in the quarterback's lap and his arm gets hit when he's throwing too so something to think about all right so third and 10 now this is a good read and throw from walker actually a really good read because initially you don't i mean you can you can get kind of it's it's Seattle's pre-snap look is is very interesting. It's not necessarily telling you split safety, cover two. I mean, there are down corner indicators, but the way the safety is kind of hovering on the hash, you're thinking maybe this could be roll to cover three, right? Where you roll down and roll back and you're playing bail, bail. So he does a pretty good job of sniffing out the deception that Seattle's trying to put together to make this more difficult. So he deserves credit of sitting in and processing this. He sees, and again, to me, it's probably cover six with quarter, quarter, half. But boy, is like Love's eyes are inside the whole time here on the hash, even though he is sprinting over. It's a, it's a good read to pick apart the leverage of that cover six side. Here's the tight view. Pretty good protection. Last second postage does slip off right there. Walker has to deliver this with 55 in his face, just gets it delivered, and is accurate too. So good route, good ball, good read. One of his better throws of the day. Same drive, eight seconds left in the first quarter. This is a fun concept they went to a couple times. It's just counter, right? So if we rewind it, I'm actually going to see if uh, I have the tight view of this one. There we do. we do. So you're just getting guard kick out. Down the line, kick out, right? Gap blocking everywhere else. Pretty simple stuff. Good job by David and Donovan right here. Good cut by Strong. He's from the gun. He runs it pretty well. Runs it pretty well. Second quarter now. 17-7 still. This is DTR snap, right? You get a little power read shovel. Watch from the tight view here. So, technically speaking... If they're not automatic, they might be telling them, hey, man, you're just going to pitch the shovel. You're technically supposed to read here. If this back can beat him to the perimeter, you give it, right? We're going blocking up front. You're going to get gap downs and pull, right? And then the tight end's kind of looping around here for the pitch. So I think... I think he's reading him based on the eyes. DTR has the eyes on him. I think he's reading him. If he's crashing inside, this ball should be given. And you got a nice little seal block right there to get outside. A chance at least. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Moore might not have been able to get there. Nonetheless, it works just fine. Little nine-yard gain. I like the design. I like getting DTR a little more comfortable on the field again after the debacle against the Ravens. And based on what we heard from Stefanski today, there's a chance he's going to be playing this week. This is a frustrating one. Go back and watch it again. It's just mesh. There's two answers, man. All right. So you get 
more slide into the flat. You get over, over, mesh out underneath it. He's wide open. You just have to throw it and complete it. I mean, there's no reason that these plays with this. I mean, I understand that the Batonio's beat here and you have to step up and slide up, but we're throwing from a, a, a wonky base. If you're going to do this, you better be able to deliver an accurate throw because it's wide open. You can't have turnovers down here when points are so hard to come by and you get somebody wide open. Right? You can't make every throw from a perfect base. It's just going to be chaotic. You got to be able to deliver these. Take something off of it. Just give him a catchable ball. There's nobody around him. It's really frustrating. Really frustrating to not get points there. Still 17-7, third and one. This is, this is an interesting choice. I mean, it's third and one, and we're punching out seven steps from the gun. So, you know, it's a choice. I don't really understand it. This is one of the two play calls I had an issue with from Kevin in this one. You're getting like a now slide, uh, you know, a little whip route. You're getting a deep corner from Njoku, and then you're getting a sail route from DPJ. So, you know, with this little offset back here, you see the Seahawks are pointing. They think a concept is coming back this way because the Browns like to do this little reverse out and hand back inside. I, I mean, a seven-step drop on third and one from under center is not something you normally see. Five, six, seven. You could off the break, you can throw this ball. I mean, the the, the Seahawks have it kind of bracketed. With what they're running, they're running quarter, quarter, half again because you get a down course cover six. So it seems as though they thought they would get this wide open, and they do. And PJ's thinking about throwing it, but he pulls it down and takes off and fortunately picks up seven yards. But that's an interesting third and one choice. Yeah, Ricardo, I'll get to the. Uh, so two questions here. Um, fifth dog asked, why was that down by contact? Apparently the rule says even if a guy's on the ground after an intercept, the ball is also considered a part of the first contact, I guess. That's what Stefanski said after the game. So news to me, I didn't know that, but that's how they ruled it. We will, yes, Ricardo, highlight the plays where he's locked on to Amari. I already talked about one. We will get to some more of them. This is the reverse. You know, Kevin's trying some stuff. This play was like huge in week three where you're running what looks like, and the Browns run a lot of this, run a lot of toss sweep stuff, and you're trying to slide out. David's just a little too casual right here. Stumbles, trips twice. And even so, Seattle has it covered well. Sometimes trick plays are just covered well, right? They're sitting back in coverage, and they're covered well, and that one was an example of a nice job by Seattle. Little screen concept right here on first third and eleven. So you sell David pushing out. He takes this step out and then drives back in here. Postage has to just sort of stay at the line of scrimmage. He can release his man and then he's up lead blocking. I like this screen. It's good because it's a good little tendency breaker off the Browns like to take these tight ends off of chips and slide them to the flat. So sell them to the flat, turn them back inside. And, oh, yeah, let's get a lead blocker up in here, too. So I really like this design. Right, David? Uh, Postage just has to know who's covering him, who's the nearest threat. He does a great job getting a, getting a block there, and that turns into 11 yards, right? 11 yards on a third and 11. Sorry, nine yards on a third and 11. Here's an example of locking into Amari. Now, not a bunch of routes open on the backside, but there's not a doubt in my mind there's not a doubt in my mind that he's he's not even considering throwing the ball anywhere other than back shoulder here. Again, I don't <laughs> the route concept on the backside is interesting. I mean, we're getting like slant here with a couple under routes, which are pretty basic stuff to cover. I'd like I'd like to see somebody maybe run a under and go or something like that. I I just it's it's pretty simple to cover on fourth and two. You know, you you 
would like to have a little bit more creativity and there was some foreshadowing in this but i mean there's no read he's not he's looking down the middle of the field for a second but he's not really i mean if you if he was looking right side i'm throwing more right now right once he clears the backers leverage more is open for a first down He's pretty much set on stone on, on being patient at the top, bouncing around a little bit and trying to throw a back shoulder ball. We get bailed out by a flag on this one, but that's locking in. Right, that's locking in. We'll talk. Yeah, it's not the same play, Tree, tree J there, but the, the it's uh, similar in terms of where his eyes are going. Here's a good little run uh, on a second and six. This is what Pierce, Pierre's doing a really nice job, and this is a good job by Harrison Bryant right here of bending these back, right? There's... I talk about this a lot. If you if you hear me, or you've listened to me, or wrote written. Whoa, slow down, Jake. If you have read what I have written, outside zone has a bounce course, what's called a bang up inside course. Here is how they teach it, or there's a bend to the backside course. And uh, Pierre Strong has done a nice job of feeling out the bend path. A couple different games here, so it's a great job of then getting vertical off of it, picking up eight nine yards. Nice play. Still mid second quarter here. Still 17 7. Motion in from three by one, two by two. You're going to get a high low read with the post wheel. He comes off the post wheel, and this is a good job by Amari of working to space and a good job of delivering the football by Walker, right? So schematically, you're going to get a post, right, with a wheel off of that on the back side and then over here you're going to get a settle called a stick with a dig behind it to try to high low 33 here and create some space in the middle of the field right so let's look at it again kind of step by step his eyes are left side kind of sitting does the wheel have a chance it doesn't the post is covered at this point if you're late Mari's open right here. You can throw it. You could also throw the stick. But if your eyes aren't there, when he gets back to Amari, it's not open. Not as open as you would like it to be. He sets and wants to throw it. Amari sees space. Timing isn't good. When he takes his hand off the ball twice, 21 here is driving. I think that's Weatherspoon is driving on more. So he does a good job of literally hanging into the last second to deliver that one. Big play, 20, 21 yards, I believe. The tight view will give you a feel like the thing that's unfortunate is watch the, the left side of the line kind of quits on this. And I, I mean, it's a long play to delivery, too. The quitting on the play here creates a chance for 97 to hit the quarterback. Now, it ends up being a roughing the quarterback, a helmet to helmet, but it's a nice play. I mean, again, big play. Not sure that it's. It's certainly off script. Let's say that. And I think you guys and I would agree that off script is something the Browns need more of. Now, first and 10, you're going to laugh at the, I laughed at this in real time. Uh, Nick Harris in the flat, throwing his hand up like he's open. I think that's pretty funny. 53 here, big lineman. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, generally the concept here would be this. He goes shallow to the flat to pull this player out of the window and then David is being covered on a speed out by 44, who's trying to jump that, and then he pivots back inside, and it's open. But Harris is too deep, and he gets chucked here, and then you know, kind of fiddle faddles his way into the middle of the of the route from Njoku, reminding us that he's an offensive lineman. He needs to be shallow right here, right now. I think he thinks he's going to get his 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 big man touchdown. He's got his hand up in the air here, right just completely making a muck of the play. But you can see he almost ends up screening the man, but this could have been a touchdown. I mean, David thinks he's getting hit by the defender, but it's not. It's actually his own man. Second and goal. This is pretty easy. This is really well blocked. Great job by Harrison. All right, James Hudson right here. Good job creating a wall. Great you know, obviously a great block by Harris on Brooks, and that's literally a walk-in touchdown, which makes you kind of frustrated for some of their other short yardage plays that could just be that simple. All right, I want to remind everyone we're at two-minute period of the second quarter now. Back in empty. 
as we know, not many good things are happening from empty. I mean, Seattle's just running man. They're just deceptively running man with an extra pressure man. Man free. Sack within the first two, two and a quarter seconds. This one is on DeWand, who just gets beat by an inside rip by Boye Mafe. They actually pick up the, the extra pressure man here. 56 Brooks, they pick him up. This is actually well blocked off the left side. Enough to throw it, but Dewan gets beat inside. That's the sack. Now we're in the second half. 17-14 still. This one's fun. It looked pretty familiar to you guys. Looks familiar to me. Right? What do they do? Talk about it earlier. They're going to give this little eye candy. More running this way. Away from the play. Selling Joku outside. Sneak back inside. Get a couple middle leaks. Blocks. Great job by Batonio of getting upfield. And you take aggressive pressure guys off the right side. Good job by Walker of getting it delivered. Tunnel that thing back up inside. Good job by Joel of getting out in front. You got a 41-yard gain to start the second half. So, again, really, really great stuff here. Here's a, here's a tight view of it. They bring two off a side. Great job by Dewan of picking up a man. Keller picking up a man. Right? Postage just does a little box-out move, <laughs> which you like to see, right? It's not illegal. A little box-out move. Look at Joel reliving the glory days, sprinting out in front of it. and right, It's a big gain. Screen game stuff was really good in this one. Five of five for 105 yards. Second and 15 now, 948 in the third. This is a, the, probably the second best ball of the day, second or third best ball. He had three really good ones. This is a great job reading this concept, second and 15. Browns love to run kind of the stick stuff where they'll run three, take advantage of um, soft spots in zone. If you get five under or two, if you get three deep, four under or two deep, five under, you know, you want to just kind of drive, stick it up. You want to take this middleman, peel middle coverage, and then you're you're settling here, and then you you usually get a late release, a late release, and try to space the field that way. But sometimes you you run this stuff, you can find these soft spots, right? So the nickel jumps 85 here in, in Joku and leaves the nice little void to to get it up over the top to more. And you know, again, that's a that's a 27 yard gain, 25 yard gain on on a second and 15. Good protection, good delivery, right? Good stuff. So third and 11 now, same drive, okay? Third and 11. So you get a slant. The, the Browns went to this stuff, right? So you get double slant here to the high side, right? So you get, you know, double slant, and then you get a slant flat combination, to the to the boundary so it's actually a good spot to throw it if he puts it on his upfield shoulder right here now again there's a safety bearing down if he if he keeps some two things can happen i want to be very careful if he puts it on his uphill shoulder i've seen this player kind of stay skinny and get through this and work into the end zone he could also if it's too far out in front of him get absolutely hammered by that safety you know, it's third and 11. The ball's low. You know, it's it's two yards short. You would like to be able to maybe take a hit and get a couple more yards. But on this one, ends up a couple short. They end up, I think, and this is where they end up kicking the field goal. So this is the next possession out. This is after the Maurice Hurst interception, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Again, back to that draw. Actually, this is not a draw. This is split zone. So split zone means... Right inside zone, working the double teams, climbing to the backer, double teams, right? And we're kicking right here, up inside. Browns ran split zone in the second half really well. I mean, that's, that's easy money. That's nine yards. That's easy money, right? Here's your first read. I know, Philly, you were talking about, are they going to read some of this stuff? They have before. They 
started to do more of it again. So you're reading 58. Whoa. Reading 58 here. Very simple. If he crashes, you're pulling. Good stuff. Again, that was a second and short chunk gain. First and 10 down near the goal line here. You'd love to go up 24-17 at this point, right? 257. So this is a third and two. I think I have it misrepresented. It says first and 10. It's third and two. I want to make that clear. Yeah, this is, I mean, I'm not sure what indicator we have to tell us that a back shoulder is going to work here. So you're getting a a, a shallow or, or, a, or a drag that is that is very open if you go through the process. Right? So at what moment, these two are locked up. Like he's not giving any I've turned and run upfield indicators for back shoulder. On top of the Browns have put a lot of back shoulders on tape so the Seattle corners are aware of it. Like, I'm not sure why you would be locked into that. Even if they broke the huddle and he said something to him, like there's nothing from a quarterback perspective in this moment at a time of decision to throw where they're, where they're locked up that tells me it's open. So simply come down to your second route, right? You have drag, you have a stick route, and you have a corner route. I mean, this drag, the drag route stuff was wide open all day. It was wide open all day. Whoever said something to whoever, right, when they came out of the huddle, like you can't let you can't operate that way. Like this is a touchdown. It's a touchdown. So you have to find him. You have to find him. Now we're into the fourth quarter, third and three. Again, sound familiar? A lot of these third and threes. This was a nice job here out of a bunch formation finding. I like the route concept too, because it's an actual like two part route breaking concept. So you're going to have him play off of Njoku's route, sell the out and then pivot back inside. And you'll see Jamal Adams get caught up on this one with David's release outside on his out route. So that's the, the Browns need to be doing more of this double moves. This is where teams beat these coverages. Here's a look inside at the pressure. A nice job of picking up this twist between Wyatt and Postage, right in the back, getting involved in there too to help keep the, the pocket clean. Good stuff. That's a good third down completion. Not well enough, Brian. Let's say that. He does not see drag routes well enough. All right. So still fourth quarter, first and 10. Still up three. Nine yard gain. They've been running this stuff. Here's what I like. Usually, um, what they've been doing is having DPJ here in a tight alignment and having him pin from this angle. It's been a big indicator for toss sweep stuff for them that they would do the pin and pull. But this is a fun tendency breaker because they take the wide receiver here opposite right and snap it when he's got good leverage and he does a good enough job between him and Jedrick of, of taking care of that you get a two for one from Joel right here on 56 54 and boy we would we would really like to just make one this is just make one man miss in space and you could be off to the races that's a little bit of what you're missing with 24 um, this is not actually the same play, right? Because um, they, I believe in that last one, they had um, like Kareem was right here on it and they, they sell a dive here and then they pitch it out with the quarterback's right hand. This is just a true reverse pivot toss. So this isn't the same thing. Toss is a little behind him. going to clean that up, but nice game. Yeah, I think some of the stuff is uh Yeah, I mean, this is all some like easy stuff. I don't think Watson can't handle any of this stuff. Split zone again, right? 
if he stays on his feet. That's a big run. At this point, the Browns are feeling themselves a little bit. Second and one, right? Getting downhill. They're starting to become a little bit more inside zone based, and I like it. Now, again, we go. Yeah, I mean, this is empty. I'll let it play through. Sorry, guys. So let's draw it up. This is um, the concept you would get later, slant with an under route and the key third down. You have forward motion here, slide to the flat, right? And you're going to try to high-low read it. I mean, I, I again, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I th maybe they're trying to sell a little pick here. And this play is sort of dead on arrival. Like it's going to get, even if this ball is caught out in front of him, he'd have to break a tackle to, to end up making this play. I just, it's not on third and three, third and four. They're just not having any success with that stuff. Now, final, final drive for the Browns, 546. Does this play look familiar? Split zone, kick out. Nice job. Again, that's six yards. It doesn't even look like much, but that's six yards gained. Second and four now. Same drive. Read it, right? You get a crash. Pull, keep, five yards, first down. Same drive again now after two more plays. So you're third and three out near the 30. I mean, we got you got to hit these. You got to hit these. Third and three, and you're, I mean, you're throwing again, you know, which is something they were doing in this game a lot. But I, I don't mind the double move. Look how it kills 22. You got to give him a catchable ball, man. Like, you got to give him a catchable ball. They get lucky up here at the top of the screen. You'll see this corner here put his hands up in the face again, right? Grab the face mask. This official at the top of the screen calls it. So you get bailed out, get illegal use of hands. But, I mean, like, if you give him a catchable ball up here past the 50, it's got a chance to be a touchdown. And I think the Browns are just really frustrated with this stuff from Walker. He's just missing, missing throws. Second and eight now, right? This is the final big culmination of stuff here. Gun pin pull. Again, motion to it. You get the pin from Donovan. Toss it. You got people out in front. You would have liked to have gotten this first down, but you didn't. But you get yourself in third and three. Now, here's the play you have to talk about. So they motion to two by two. Here's what you're doing. All right. This is a, this is a, there's a lot of moving parts here. So, you know, they take a timeout. I, I don't know. I would presume that they didn't tell him who to throw to. All right. Here's what Seattle's doing. Let me give you the Browns routes first. They're running an under route. Again, popular. Slant. Flat. Slant. Right. Seattle's bringing an extra man, so they got to play with five in the secondary, right? Sorry, six in the secondary instead of seven. They're creeping inside and bringing Jamal Adams. Outside pressure, inside pressure, they're going to bring him through B. Now, Seattle, on the other hand, is going to run a version of quarters is how it's labeled by some of the data gathering sites, but, I mean, it feels like read two to me. So, what they knew is they know that they're going to be losing this slot coverage defender. So this safety digs is going to roll down. Wagner is going to widen and expand underneath. You're going to have nobody because you're getting off here, right? Kind of sitting and reading one, two to one from the safety. They Seattle is saying basically this. We want to know we know that you're going to do this. You're going to see pressure, a blitz, and you're going to want to throw into that blitz. Right? Because logically, what quarterbacks think is 
what what do, what do they think? If they're vacating a spot, there has to be open territory. So when PJ sees Adams blitzing, he thinks, well, what route runs right into that space? This one. The problem is Seattle also knows where they're vulnerable. They're jumping here. Cornerback is shading inside. They're jumping here. So here's the thought process. I mean, again, I'm running it. I'm treating it two downs as two downs for three yards, but that's just me. So let's go through the snap, but they decide to throw and let's go through the thought process of the throw. He sees the pressure. He doesn't look anywhere other than right side. So he's decided at this moment, I'm throwing right side. Problem is the corner has inside leverage. Bobby and the safety Wagner here are, are, are expanding safety's driving. Even if this ball gets through, <laughs> you know, obviously it's already hit the helmet of Adams right there. But even if this ball gets through, you have a three person convergence that is going to make this ball really hard to be caught, right? Really hard. So what you would like is to understand some things about what, you, you know, there's two things as a quarterback. I can give a big ball fake here that gets 33 in the air and then reset. And if you look left side, you have the back in the middle of the field or the back side flat wide open if you reset. Because you have late protection help. Wyatt does a good job of actually getting over to him. So what you would, in an ideal world, next level quarterbacking would be me knowing teams are going to be rotating toward the blitz to cover that up, right? And I have the backside flat with a chance to throw it to him pretty quickly and get a chance to get the first down. Because watch off the ball, like right off the ball, boom, it's open. So really frustrating, man, to have it go like that. You can see... There is no left side consideration for Walker on this. Eyes are up right, sees Jamal blitzing. You can see why it actually go to figure it out. It's actually going to be a, you know, Hudson had been beat here, but it was a decent pocket to reset and maybe find your back or even scramble left side too. It's just the worst outcome, man. It's the worst outcome. So, that's your offense. I mean, there's a late play here in the in the final waning seconds, 28 seconds left, where Walker's trying to scramble away, and Jed, I think, kind of gives up on this a little too early. It's unfortunate because, I mean, DPJ is wide open on a dig here. He maybe could have got that thrown, but, you know, it is what it is. That ball would be done. Let's switch to defense. All right. All right, let's talk D. First part of the game here wasn't fun, so be prepared for some uh, some some uncomfortable chats, right? Uh, great first play here, just a, a counter or power. I think it's actually power that they're running here. Trying to get up inside. JOK off the edge, does a great job crashing down and killing this one. Good job by Elliot, too, changing the course of direction. Watch Elliot right here. Gets through, makes Walker have to change his course. It's a good play. Third and four on the opening drive, still 0-0. Zero, zero. Good man beater from Seattle here. Let's rewatch it again. So you get all the man-to-man the -man indicators off the snap. You get an inside release from DK, right? So DK is... Inside and vertical. Metcalf uses him as a shield. Works, sorry, um, Lockett as a shield. Works outside and then turns and pivots back inside, right? And Newsom who's fighting over the top of it. Can't get back. Easy pitch and catch for 13 yards. Same drive, big run. We can't have this. Can't have this. You can't have three people logging up a gap with nobody here because he can't get around. 
I mean, this is as bad a void as you will find in NFL run game. You cannot do it. Can't have it happen. Got to be better run fits, man. Third and eight, that same opening drive now. So you can see you're getting three deep, three under with a pressure. So you're getting Walker pressuring here. Again, I discipline in zone. <laughs> so, again, I think Seattle does a good job with route concept here. They're going to take the motion man, sit him down. You're going to get what's called a clown route. So you can't. You know, you're trying to put a bind on this far outside spot. Thornhill has to run with this. And then Denzel's dropping underneath the clown. And you have to trust that you're getting the backside cover three guy rotating. If DK were to break that off inside, you'd have an answer for it. And you do, right? This is all bracketed, but Thornhill's eyes are inside. Denzel has to honor the deep route coming here. So that leaves nobody for Lockett. Right? There you go. First and goal. This is your fly sweep stuff. Ideally, they want to push this outside with a double team, climb off the double team, and go here. Wright has to be able to take this away. He cannot allow the cutback to happen. He's unblocked. And you want us to take that away. Newsom's eyes are following. You know, I actually don't know. Newsom is not expecting him to get the ball quite clearly. He never even sees it. 7.56 now, 7 nothing. Seahawks with the ball back. This is really just a nice play from Geno. Stepping up, sliding up. The Browns have it covered pretty well. You know, steps up when he steps up. Watch these two players take off for him. Leaves Lockett middle of the field. It's tough. Can't let quarterbacks escape or they can create chaos for you. First to 10. Reverse. Now, this is an example I want to show you guys of uh, how man to man can help you with reverses, right? So, man, man. Man to man. And then watch the eyes of Delpit and Denzel. All right. You just, you're going to follow it. So you want to call reverses against zone. You get people following it. You have a lot of bodies to the play side. So it's a good job. Right call, right time. First and 10 here. One of the one of the only ways you 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 have a real chance against off coverage to break up these, you know, wide receiver. I call them tunnel screens, because Denzel is going to try to get outside. You're getting two out. You need this defensive end to be a madman. When he senses screen, he's got to be hauling butt back in this direction, right? Because once it's out here, your numbers stink. You got four four Seattle blockers coming out here for three Browns players. You need that defensive end to be a madman once he gets turned back inside. Wright is a little slow here, has no chance. It turns into a 15-yard gain for Smith and Jigba. 623. Same possession, still 7-0. Wanted to show this play. This is a really good job. So the Browns. Last week against Gardner Minshew, we're not doing a good job of if you're going to be the guy who's crashing, taking that away on zone read, then there better be a scrape player to, to be there for quarterback pull. They did not do that last week. JOK was pretty determined once he reads down block, he was going to be there for quarterback pull, and he was, and 
made a great play. Right? be frozen here. I'm going to have to close this and reopen it in just a second. All right. Let's see if we can get it to go again. I don't know if I got to the right spot or not. I think I am. I'm not. I went a little too far. Bear with me, guys, just a second. So there's JOK's play. Okay, so now you're at third and 12. Another chance to get off the field. Man-to-man -man everywhere. You can see the indicators. These two right here playing a bracket. First in, first out rule. So if he goes inside, he's taking him. If he goes outside, he's taking him. And this is all covered up pretty well. You got a low sitter who's taking away anything middle. You got a deep defender taking away deep middle. Everything's pretty covered. 99 has a chance to sack him, but he doesn't get him down. And then scramble drill, Gino hits. You know, hits lock at the last second. You get, right? You got him. You got to get him down. And you just lose lose concentration for a split second. Next drive out. Boot action. And the Browns get caught in the crosshairs. Again, on Newsom. All right, so we got a bunch of man-to-man. -man. What tells me it's man-to-man? -man? Well, right, I have Ward is going to run with Lockett in motion. That's telling me it's man-to-man, -man, so that means it's pretty much man everywhere, right? Man, man, and man, right? So off the snap. He's with him. Taki's beat. This ball could be thrown. But, you know, whatever. I mean, Newsom is like trying to communicate a switch right here. That you stay home and I'll stay here. But Ward doesn't get that communication. So his man runs the shallow underneath. He is the one who's wide open. So a miscommunication, a blown coverage, and 15 yards. 228 now, first and five after a offside penalty. Right, it's good throw and good catch. Off the motion, he allows DK to release inside. Not really, didn't really get much, you know, of a touch on him there. Then he's pushing back outside, and he does a good job of stacking Emerson. What I mean by stacking is you get back up, cover him up right there. Great hands. It's a good play by a good wide receiver. So again, it's at this point you got you've know, given up 14 points. You just gave up that long catch to DK. Next play out. It's a great play by Jordan Elliott, splitting this double team right here, making a play. Good job by Miles setting the edge, turning it back inside, and Elliott to make that play. Right. So second and six now. Apologize. So this is a different different possession now. So Seahawks ended up kicking a field goal on that one after a couple missed throws. This is a great play by Hurst. I wanted to highlight it. He does an excellent job splitting right here. Being there to take that away. Good job by Fields too. Jordan Elliott, you know, kind of got tossed there, but is at least creating penetration chaos. Third and six, man-to-man -man everywhere. You're going to get a slot fade. You're going to get a hitch, or sorry, a shallow slant. Divide and a slot fade. He goes to the slot fade, and Newsom does a good job against locking on that one, breaking that up. Later in the second quarter, 425, second and 20, after a, I think the Seahawks had a hands of the face, and I wanted to show this one because, you know, this is a little bit tighter. It's, it's, it's a way... It's away from the, uh, you know, it's not a field throw, so it's not really wide, but watch the difference in how Okoronkwo feels out this screen against what Alex Wright did. Boom, and then he's the one changing the direction of Charbonnet, 
and then the screen only goes for four yards. So just an example of how that edge has to really create the chaos when they tunnel it back inside. Right before the half now. So the Seahawks get it back 141. And I wanted to show this play. So it's a big play. It's a 12-yard gain for them. The Browns are bringing slot pressure right here. And I think they bring another one and walk, and then they drop Miles from the backside. He just can't quite get there, though. Watch. He would have peeled in J Smith and Jigba's head off here, but he can't quite get to the backside over route, right? And you'll see it from the tight view. He can't, can't quite make it. It's too far to travel. And just keep that in mind for later on. So I'm saying. Keep that in mind for later on. Big play by Hurst. They alter it. It works out a little better. All righty. So inside zone. The same about minute 20 left. I need my two over one here. Cannot allow this to happen. He, if he's inside, he's got to be inside like a maniac. I'm imagining Delpit's here for the pull. You have to take this away. You cannot let this happen. If you're staying on, you don't close and compress that down. We're out the front door. 25 yards. Third and two, same time here before the half. Again, Mo Hurst, great job right here. Boom, inside win, takes it away, right into Z and the guys on the backside. They actually end up, Seattle gets the fourth down. They're running hurry up. And this is just a great play by Martin Emerson at the bottom of the screen, jumping that out route. He had seen it one other time on the drive. You could see he was sitting and waiting on it. And he does a great job. I want to show it to you one more time of just put the foot in the ground, boom, drive lateral to run underneath it. Look at how his shoulders get turned. Boom, right on the sideline, picks it off. It's just a great play. I think Pete Carroll was mad about he thought the Browns had too many guys on the field or something. I don't know. Anyway, third quarter, 707, second and six. Dial up pressure man to man. Browns catch a break here. Two people are open. This is the third straight game. Not the third straight, but the third time this has happened in the last four. Ravens did it. And I think they threw it to Justice Hill. Then uh, Jonathan Taylor caught one of these against the uh, just last week. These are rail routes out of the backfield. You bring a fifth player, it's man to man. You run two. Rub routes here. He's got to run under it. You get lucky. You also get a drag here from Lockett where Ward is over the top, and it's wide open too. So you get fortunate that this on a second and six doesn't turn into a really big play because Lockett is wide open, as you can see right here. And at this point, Taki Taki is beat. It's just a bad throw. So a good throw allows that to happen. Gino was not very good in this game. Third and six now after the same play. Now, this is the Hurst interception watch. He tries to go back to the same route, but here, watch it tight. Instead of dropping this player all the way across, they said we're going to take this one and drop him underneath the pressure. And this is just an excellent play by Hurst. Getting a hand on it first of all. And then getting underneath it and really making an acrobatic catch, too. I mean, that is as good as you will see from a defensive tackle. He played a whale of a game. Really good game. Third and two, late third quarter here again. Browns get him in third down. This one make you sick to your stomach. It was 2017. This game is over at this point. Very close to it. So Seattle's running an option route from number two here. So how it says is if he presses on his, so it's just a, a, a takeoff here with a choice route. If he pushes lateral and 29 here, Cam Mitchell expands, he's going to buckle it up. Gino reads it as he's going to keep running here. 
He doesn't keep running. Again, the video freezes. I don't know why that's doing that. I'm sorry, guys. I have to reload it one more time. We're at the 504 mark. Um, Boy, the game just kind of swings on this one, man. Here it is. So when Njigba sits it down because he thinks the leverage isn't good, Gino thinks it is. Oh, I'm sure Cam is sick about that. It's tough, man. Second and three, late third quarter. This is the possession before their final possession. Again, we're getting too wide. Too much stacking here, right? Here, here, and then we have a linebacker with no influence. We don't compress. We get blocked on the backside, and that creates a massive void. They have got to do better with the consistency of their run fits, man. We cannot have this stacked up chaos on the front side three and then nobody for the back side. So that's the big run on that drive. Now the Browns get it to third down, third and 11. I think they got a false start. Seahawks only release three into routes. They do the same thing the Browns do where they do those swirl route, swirl route, and a, and a middle curl. You, you always, and the Browns are running cover two. You'll notice both corners with eyes inside bracketing and ready to jump up and take away these flat routes, right? It's too, it takes too long to develop, and Miles does a great job winning back inside. Ogbo does a good job here of creating upfield pressure, make Geno step up. Miles goes, pushes, and Charles Cross did a great job in this game. Miles lifts that arm, swims through. Man, you can, like, he creates the fumble, but that ball doesn't squirt out somehow. If it did, Z and Miles were ready to pick it up, and this would have been huge. Instead of a punt, Browns get it out near the 50-yard line, right? So that stuff is tough. All right, and last drive, minute 19. Seattle completed like a 9 and a 6, and this is the play that kind of swings everything. Again, it's cover 2. How can you tell it's cover two, Jake? Well, you got a middle squat. You got deep half, deep half, and two corners playing that inside technique. And this is fine. They're, what's the snap set off here? 119? You know, okay. We're bracketing it up. Right, come up, make the tackle. Make the 33-yard line. Still feel good about forcing a field goal at some point, but this can't happen. Can't give up 27 yards on what should have been an eight-yard gain. So that changes the vibe, feel. Browns come out trying to create something, right? They're trying to create a loss play, so I understand why they're doing this. They're creating, they're trying to create an edge pressure, replace it, and again, this is what the difference is. Like, Geno sees this cap happening. You can see he's stacking him. Like, it's obvious that there's a blitz coming here, right? So they call bubble into it, throw it. Now, here's what you have to do. You have to you have to bottle this thing in inside out. You cannot let him cut back inside and beat you here, and you can't let him win outside, right? Those are the two things you can't let happen. I think Emerson gets a little too inside happy right here. Now, does he get held? I think it's, <laughs> I mean, I think it's a pretty obvious hold, if you ask me, uh, happening right here, but they don't call it. And it's a touchdown. I, I mean, I, I'm actually kind of flabbergasted they didn't call that hold, but, you know, it is what it is. Brown's got some calls too. So that's it. That's a wrap. That's a tough game. It's a really tough game. So, um, as you know, every chance to win. We'll see what adjustments they make this week, who starts at quarterback, how the defense can get out of this first quarter rut they're involved in right now because it's really killing them. So, um, you know, as we do at the OBR, I wrote today about that third and three play in detail for you guys. I'll continue to try to cover everything you ask from me. Um, thanks for stopping by. You know, we'll, we'll keep it up. They're four and three. Very winnable game with the Cardinals coming up too. So 
thanks for being here guys appreciate you stopping by um and and, and hopefully uh, getting something out of this as well so uh have a great monday night enjoy monday night football i'll catch you guys on the podcast tomorrow morning so all right guys until then be well thanks for being here